Hello, welcome back to Synthesizers and Samplers Explained. My name is Matt Hayes. Uh, in this lecture, titled Anatomy of a Synthesizer, we're going to get down into the basic components uh, that are used to build a synthesizer. So any synthesizer you might use, whether it's plug-in or hardware synth, you would expect to see these at least these five pieces to it right here. The oscillator, filter, amplifier, envelope, and LFO controls. Now you might have been messing with sense already and seen a lot more than this, and that's absolutely fine. We're going to dig in deeper for sure. But these are the five you would expect to see, and a lot of those extra controls that you might have come across a lot of times relate back to one of these five components right here. So this is just kind of, a, again, introduction to the controls that you will see on a synth. We're going to dig in deeper. So the first one, oscillator. This is kind of the first step in the signal flow of a synthesizer. This is what actually generates the initial sound. Anytime you press a key, the oscillator kicks in and creates a waveform. And we've talked about sound waves a little bit, so I'm not going to dig any deeper into that. Next one we see is filter. Filter plays around with the harmonic content. So it's essentially a type of equalizer, um, and it's just a, a tone control. It helps you to shape the sound after the oscillator has generated that sound. All right, next we have the amplifier, basically just volume controls. could be as simple as a fader or a volume knob. Sometimes can go a lot deeper than that. We would expect to see envelope controls too, right? ADSR, that was attack, decay, sustain, release. We've looked at what those do, so now we're going to see how they actually play around with the sound when we're triggering notes on our keyboard. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. So it's really, it's a sound wave generator just like the oscillator is, but at much, much lower frequencies. Frequencies below what the human ear can actually hear. And what we usually do with the LFO is we'll route it to a parameter like the filter maybe, and it'll just kind of modify the filter. So it, it'll play around with the frequencies and just kind of create movement in the sound is usually what we use that for. A lot of times the LFO can actually be <clears throat> routed around to control whatever we want it to control on the synth. So those are the five main components, oscillator, filter, amplifier, envelope, and LFO. So let's take a look at a synth in Reason this is actually an, an old version of Reason. I have it upgraded. Uh, so I pulled up Subtractor, which I like using Subtractor for explaining this stuff because it has everything laid out in a pretty intuitive <laughs> uh, format. So you can kind of see what everything is. And it's, it's good for teaching because everything's laid out in kind of a straightforward manner. And it has pretty much all the controls you would expect to see on a synthesizer. So first control oscillator this synth actually has two oscillators built into it right now I have oscillator 2 turned off so we're just generating a sine wave from oscillator 1 and we can change the waveform of it right now most everything else is pretty much bypassed so we're just hearing the initial waveform so if I go down we can generate a triangle wave A little more harmonic content to a triangle wave, so a little more exciting than we have the square wave. Sawtooth wave. Okay. So we're just, again, choosing which waveform is going to be generated. So the oscillator is the initial sound creation point of the synthesizer. Then after that, over here, we have our filter, well filters, I have filter 2 turned off right now, and there's different types, low pass, band pass, high pass, I'll explain those in more detail later on. So the filter plays around with the harmonics, like I said. So if we start pulling this, this slider down right here, we're going to remove harmonics from it. So right now we have very, very kind of abrasive sawtooth, and we can kind of mellow it out by removing some of these harsh harmonics. Over here where it says level, this is basically our, our just simple amplifier control, just a master volume. Uh, 
and then envelopes. And as you can see, this actually has three different envelopes, an amplifier envelope, a filter envelope, and a modulation envelope. So amplifier envelope is going to affect volume. Filter envelope is going to play around with the frequency. And the modulation envelope is going to mess around with the LFO. So we talked about volume envelopes in the previous lecture, so I'm just going to mess around with the, the amplifier envelope for a minute. So we have our ADSR. If you remember, it's attack, decay, sustain, release. So sustain is the volume as we're holding down the key. Attack, as we mentioned, is a time-based control. So if I turn that up, I'm going to hear the sound more slowly ramp up in amplitude. So if you want a very quick attack for fast melodies, you want a quick, quick attack, because if we turn that up and try to play fast, it can't really keep up. So you're going to play around with this depending on type of performance really that you're playing into the keyboard. Decay, let me pull the sustain down a little bit so we can hear that. So decay again after the attack. I'm going to open these both up a little bit. We'll hear the volume change. Since I pulled the sustain down, we're going to hear the decay fall down into the sustain level. All right, you heard it ramp up and then fall back down to where the sustain is at. So the decay is time-based and it's controlling how long it takes to get from the top volume at the end of the attack down to the sustain level. And then release, again time based, this is when I let go of the key, how long does it take for that sound to actually fade away. Turn my sustain back up. Alright, so pressing the key, let go of the key, and then so you can hear it falls off right there. If release is all the way at the bottom, as soon as I let go of the key, it just cuts off immediately. So we have our oscillator, filter, envelope amplifier, and then oscillator, so sorry, low frequency oscillator, better known as the, the LFO. So let me go to actually to, to LFO1. So since it is a type of oscillator, we can pick a waveform for it. So triangle wave is going to be kind of a, just a nice continuous movement. And then the destination is which parameter do we actually want this to affect. So if we have it affect the oscillators, we're going to hear an effect called vibrato, <clears throat> where it actually modulates the pitch. So if I turn the amount up, it's going to start affecting the pitch. And the rate is going to be how fast the frequency of this oscillator. And if we change the waveform here, say to square wave, it's going to have abrupt jumps in pitch instead of kind of a smooth up and down like we were hearing with the triangle. And then again, the amount is like how much it affects the pitch. So you can go with very subtle effects. Or very intense effects, depending on how much the LFO is set to control the other effect you might be using. Okay, and just to kind of uh, prove a point that you're going to see this just about on all the synths you see, let me flip over to Logic and use this, oh, let me mute Subtractor so we don't hear that plan too, and unmute Logic. So I'm using one of the basic Logic synthesizers that comes standard when you buy the software. It's called ESE, Ensemble Synth. And so we have our oscillator right here. We can choose our waveform from Sawtooth. or square wave or if we start moving it above square wave we have something called PWN pulse width modulation it's still essentially a square wave but you lose that kind of symmetry that you have and so the positive portion of the amplitude might be shorter than the negative and it, it changes the tone right. but all we're doing there is just selecting the shape of the waveform for the oscillator 
Right below that, we actually have our LFO. They label it a little different. So if we're on our sawtooth, it's going to affect vibrato. If we're on square somewhere in here, it's going to affect the pulse width modulation. So this is our amount control, like we saw on subtractor. And then speed. Okay. And then we have our filter section over here. So cutoff is what frequency. We've got a low pass filter, which means it's going to remove a lot of the higher harmonics. And then below that we have a resonance control, which basically boosts the volume at whatever frequency the cutoff is set to. It makes the cutoff frequency much more pronounced. And then our envelope section right here is stripped down. All we have is attack and release, but it's going to control the same thing. If I open up attack, I'm going to have a slow rise into the note. And if I open up release, when I let go of the key, we'll hear it fade away. And then our amplifier section, just volume control. Let's make this a little easier to hear. So again, oscillator, amplifier, filter, envelope, LFO. Same controls whether we're messing with the ESE in Logic or messing with Subtractor in Reason or whatever DAW you might be working with. The same basic controls are usually available to you. Okay, so we're going to end this little tutorial right here. Um, in the next sets of videos, we're going to start looking at different types of synthesis, different ways we can actually generate waveforms. Okay, so there you go. You got a few controls to mess with. Practice and enjoy.